This episode is brought to you by Mint Mobile. The prices of everything in our life and world is going up and we need some kind of relief from it. And thankfully, Mint Mobile is giving you a much needed break on your wireless bill. Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Order today at mintmobile.com slash TFS. And thank you, Mint Mobile, for your support. Hello and welcome to Talk From Superheroes. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Rivemey. And I'm Diana McCullum. And you're listening to Talk From Superheroes, where every week we discuss a piece of nerdy TV or film. And this week, this month on the podcast, it's all spooky scary. It's all spooky scary. It's murder. It's murder crash. It's, it's, it's die and die and die. Murder crash? I'm sure some people have crashed. Some people have crashed. They got a crash. There's a crash here and there. There's a. Cr- You've at least crashed into a wall. You yeah. get thrown by Jason. You get thrown by Freddy. I can't rule out the possibility of a crash, so I'm really just going to have to go with you on this one. Thank you for your belief in me, final girl Diana McCollum. I love it every time. Uh, So this month we are doing uh, some October spooks and scares. Today on the podcast we're going to be talking about Freddy versus Jason. Uh, And it is uh, is as well, if you want more Jason action, we talked about Jason X over on our Patreon exclusive episode. So if you want more Jason conversation, head over to our Patreon page. Check that out there. Jason conversation. I'm sold. That does does have a fun flow to I it. I was doesn't there it? and I'm sold on it. <laughs> you were there. You're still here. I think we make good stuff. It, it keeps on selling itself. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be talking about Freddy and uh, Freddy versus Jason today, and we'll be joined by our guest Ryan Melville. Let's get into the conversation, shall we? Let's do it. Let's talk about Freddy versus Jason. Right. We have seen Freddy versus Jason, and we're joined by our, our wonderful guest, uh, actor, comedian extraordinaire. It's, it's our friend Ryan Belville. Hi, Ryan. Hi. Hi, Diana and Andrew. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> what a treat. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching the movie and, and yes. joining us to, to talk. I'm sure you were you were so spooked and scared the whole time. It is terrifying. <laughs> Maybe not for the reasons people hope, but it is a scary movie. That's for sure. There's a lot, there's a lot to process here. Uh, well, let's start with our usual. It's the simple question. Uh, we'll start with Diana. Diana, did you like it? I actually did like it. I had an okay time here. I was I was surprised how much I like it because uh, straight up, uh, I apologize. I've never seen a Freddy or Jason film. Um, so I was like, oh, wow, this prologue really explained everything. Love that. I actually think this plot kind of makes sense. Uh, and it's just dumb. Like it's not scary, but I was having I was having good dumb fun. It was fun to make fun of watching it. So I, I don't know if that I'm not gonna say it's good, but I did like it. Um, I could have used better kills. I think the kills kind of like tampered off of being cool. And I would actually say maybe Freddy versus Jason was my least favorite part of it because I liked the teens just acting dumb. Um, so I've got a weird uh, huh. horror movie taste is what I'm finding out about myself during this podcast and this this experience. But uh, I'm going to I'm going to give it a like. What a journey you've Holy been through. Smoke. I've yeah. learned a lot about myself <laughs> watching <laughs> Freddy versus Jason. You love to see it. Uh, well, Ryan, what about you? Did you like it? Did I like it? Is a very I, I, I'm I'm. <laughs> it's a loaded question. No, I know. You know what? I'm kind of with you in that I did enjoy watching it to See? a certain extent. That's uh, the question. But at no point was I like, "This is good." No. It was like eating a, a, a I don't know an Arby's sandwich. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like a, you're you're eating it in the parking lot. You know, trying not to be seen by your coworkers. And you're like, no way is this good, but at the moment, I'm I'm not going to spit it out. This gets me through today. This gets me through today, a little beef and cheese. Um, so, I mean, it's $30 million. When I realize, when I think objectively, that could $30 million like budget of that film been spent on anything else better? Yes. Mm-hmm. There's so many things. I will say almost anything. But I did, I did there were some fun fan moments. Yeah. But for me, Freddy was like the... There it it was there was enough campy Freddy in it that brought me back. Yeah, I can I can see that. I have a quick question. Did you watch it alone or with someone? I watched it alone. Oh, I think it's not nearly as fun alone. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Watching it with you know us together, I think is the only reason I had a good time. Yeah, but I agree. The kills were not very good. Like f- compared to other Friday the Thirteenth and uh, Freddy movies, the kills are a bit meh. Mm-hmm. All right, Andrew, did you like it? 
Uh, I I'm 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 kind of with both of you. I liked it, but it it is academically not good. <laughs> I think that there is some fun stuff that they try here. I think that they try to make sense of it in a way that's kind of okay. I think that there are some moments where I'm like, you may have tried too hard and maybe put like three movies of plot contrivances into one. Yeah. And you didn't need to do that. But I think that this movie is the good kind of bad. Yeah. Like some movies are the bad kind of bad, <laughs> you know, like, w- like I'm trying to think of ones we've watched in the past. Like Ready Player One oh, is the bad, bad kind, kind of, of bad. bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, This is the good kind of bad where it's like, I think that everyone who made this accomplished what their intentions were <laughs> in making this movie. Yeah. Like, I don't think at any point, like the director or, or Robert, Eng- Robert England or like any of the performers were like, man, this did not turn out like we thought it was gonna. I feel like this is one where it's like everything played exactly how they thought it was gonna be made. And there's a level of accomplishment in that. Uh, so I think it's it's the good kind of bad. It's fun. It's cheesy. Yeah. It doesn't hit the heights of either of the movies from these series for gore or kills. Yeah. But there's some cheesy fun to be had here. Yeah, I agree. There's there's that uh, there there the, the kills were definitely like it just wasn't it wasn't uh, I don't know there was something missing there was something missing yeah. but it was a little over convoluted too. I I was I think the best part was the Freddy versus Jason moments for me. Those mm. are the best moments. So. so I, I think that yeah, there's 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 a bit to unpack there. I think that the Freddy versus Jason versus the rest of the movie is like two things that are at war with one. It's Freddy versus Jason versus the rest of the movie. Yes, and there's a bit to unpack there. Uh, before we do, we do want to thank our other sponsor of today's episode. We want to thank our friends over at Uncommon Goods. Uncommon goods is your secret weapon when you have to do your holiday shopping. You're going to find good gifts and goods there that are so unique, so interesting that you're not going to find anywhere else. It's going to be a delightful time of shopping for yourself or a loved one at Uncommon Goods. Absolutely. Like now is the time to get ahead of things so that you are not panicked. You don't get you don't you don't get that quality surprise when you're panicked. You want to get ahead of things, get something that make people go like, "Ooh, ah," like something a little bit different, something a little bit fun. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists uh, artists and small independent businesses with fine products often made in small batches. Uh, they have some really unique and cool stuff. Like one thing that I picked up from them that I just found to be a lot of fun, they have a lot of really cool national parks stuff that is just like really adorable, whether it's like a mug or a water bottle or an article of clothing. Like they just have a lot of really fun kind of celebration of the outdoors for any out Doorsy person in your life. Yeah, and they have like celebrations of other stuff. Like I think what a really cute one is a MLB candle collection. So it's candles that smell like baseball stadiums. So this one smells like Yankee Stadium and this one smells like Wrigley Field. So just if you've got like a baseball fan in your life, you're like, I don't want to get them cards or a jersey. It's like, here's like a super unique but like cute and cool. But campy gift. and cute. Yeah. Campy and cute. But also like who doesn't need a candle? Yeah, exactly. And Candle, candles, clothes, mugs, like a wide variety and range. They got from art to jewelry, kitchen, home, bar, whatever category it is that you might be looking for, it will help you find it. And they've just got a really well laid out website that helps you kind of like break down who you're shopping for as well. You can kind of go by like by price bracket, lifestyle, or who that person is. You can really just kind of have a bit of assistance in getting some great gift ideas. Yeah, or you can just be like, you know, a uh, home jewelry, whatever whatever you need, whatever you're looking for. Great website, great stuff on it. Fantastic stuff. We've gotten some fantastic stuff from them, and we appreciate them greatly. And to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash TFS. That's uncommongoods.com slash TFS for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer, Uncommon Goods. We're all out of the ordinary. Thank you very much, Uncommon Goods, for your support. Thank you, Uncommon Goods. So back to Freddy, back to Freddy versus Jason. It is at odds with the rest of the movie. Absolutely. Yeah, their their battle versus what's going on with the teens. Well, there there was certain stuff like right off the top. There was enough cheese, and I'd say in the first 10, 15 minutes, there was enough like fake boob action. <laughs> That I'm like, this is a How true. How dare march. you say that those boobs were fake? They were cross-eyed. <laughs> they were the, nip, the nipples were look, looking in opposite directions. 
And I'm I'm okay with that. Like for this this genre, they should be. It should be a little. It yeah, the be blood the blood's fake. The kills are fake. The boobs are fake. The boobs are fake, and the blood is fake. It is. It is. It was. It was mildly interesting. You know, when you go back and you watch an old movie that has like some CGI in it, and you're like, "Wow, CGI's really evolved over the past twenty years." This is one where I'm like. Wow, cosmetic surgery has really evolved over the past twenty years. Yeah, it's this gotten is, better. You can see you can see the growth of an industry. I think throughout this. Oh yeah, they were a little they were a little lumpy, but it was uh, it was still like I enjoyed that. There was a lot of camp. There was, there was more camp than I was expecting in a good way. Yes, that was good. Yeah, yeah. It starts out strong with that like. As cheesy as it is, the narration from Freddy to be like, I searched the depths of hell to find its greatest warrior. And then pretending to be Jason's mom and like this whole plot of like, I need people to fear me. So I'm going to have him do a series of <laughs> false flag killings yeah. in order to have my invasion of Elm Street yeah. again. I But like, it worked. I, I actually think the worked. plot made a weird amount of sense. Yeah. As long as you send Freddy to, as long as you send Jason to Elm Street, like yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna ignite the memories of the fear, and and it, uh, yeah, it was. I was like, there's no reason for these guys to work together. And I'm like, oh fuck, they got me. Uh, Damn. I, it's a, it's a, in a way, it's a buddy movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's actually like a friends to enemies movie, really, because yeah. they work together and then they turn on each other. Well, I like that Jason has nightmares. Like, mm. that he has bad dreams. I mean, that the serial killer monster, when he's, you know, if he happens to have a little snooze, has nightmares. That's great. There, yeah, there's somehow an implication that the undead do dream, but yep. the dead do not. Right. So Jason, who is undead, does have dreams Freddy can get into. But when Freddy is in a dream and Jason kills that human person, their dream stops. Yeah. So dead, no dreams. Undead dreams. Yeah. But undead don't sleep unless tranquilized. The fact that he fell think, asleep when tranquilized, I'm gonna think, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call shenanigans. I don't <laughs> think Jason like sleeps. Okay. But I think it makes sense that he dreams because he thinks. I think if your brain is working, right. then you are going to have a okay. dream. And okay. also, it, I think it makes sense he has nightmares because he's really fucked up. Well, he was having <laughs> a dream off the top, too, right? At the very beginning of the movie, he's having a dream. Oh, Isn't I guess. Freddy, Freddy goes into his brain to kind of convince him to go kill people. Oh, I guess he was already having the dream. That's See, what I thought. I, I, I was thought Freddy getting... pulled him out of hell and just resurrected him. Right. Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah, because it felt like, because he, okay, it makes sense. I think long... either interpretation is fair in this scenario. And that's yeah. the thing about great art. You know, it's open to interpretation. <laughs> the inception of its day. Everyone yeah. sees something a little bit Was he in the dream different. or not? Was he in the dream or not? It's the dream analysis of, of it all. I also really like this opening just because maybe this happens in like all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, but I was really like, oh man, I really understand that Simpsons parody of this now way better where <laughs> Groundskeeper Willie is right oh, here again. Okay. It just was yeah. like so spot on. I'm like, I feel like just this prologue is that whole Simpsons episode. I, I also like there was a, a little uh, homage to both theme theme songs. They did a little crossover theme songs like right at the beginning yeah. where it did a bit. I'm like, oh yeah. I a little piano, but then followed by the like, cha 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 yeah, I, I hadn't. I like. I was like, oh yeah, and I'd forgotten the Nightmare on Elm Street theme because I don't think I've seen a movie in like twenty years. It's surprisingly iconic. It really does sink in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I do also want to like say that 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 feeling of now knowing something that you previously knew from from The Simpsons is such a grew up in the '90s feeling <laughs> yeah. that I think we've all had <laughs> right. at some point where it's like, oh, I knew this from The Simpsons, and you. You flipped the order of learning what a thing is. I think like Kate Fear was one of them oh, for me. Kate oh yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah. The which, Sideshow Bob episode, where... which really speaks to the power of The Simpsons, wherein I already thought those were good episodes, and I didn't get the reference at all. Well, my son, who is just about to turn thirteen, has watched I think like almost every season of the episodes. He's been binging it for like a year. Mm -hmm. And like he loves it, he gets all these. But the same thing, we watch a movie or a TV show. He's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I right. get it. All oh. right, so not just people from the '90s and '80s. This is great. Okay, it's Excellent. all coming around. It's still still relevant. Glenn Gary, things. Glenn Ross makes sense now, Dad. <laughs> I even I even had one like last week. I was wa I I was sent a clip of uh, of the musical The Music Man, oh, yeah. which I didn't realize was the monorail character was based on the music. 
Music Man, and it's a clip of the Music Man being like, your kids are going to be certified, and it's that type of like rhythm singing of getting the crowd worked up, and, uh, and he's wearing the like, same all, hat. Same yeah. hat, and I'm like, oh my god, I didn't even, because I'm not a musical person, I didn't, sure. I never connected that till like last week. I would forgive uh, you for thinking Phil Hartman just came up with that. Yeah, <laughs> that is <laughs> true. He's that good. He's that good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but back to Freddie versus can, Jason. Can I just say one thing about Jason really quick? Because I was doing some research just because, like, the timelines and all the movies. Oh. But I was looking at Jason Voorhees' uh, Wikipedia, and there's all these things listed. You know how there's, like, with real people, there's, like, date of birth and all this stuff in there? <laughs> but at one point in the headers, it said classification mass murderer. That was it. I'm like, interesting. <laughs> that was, like, what they chose to just classify him. <laughs> Like yeah, yeah. As though you would go like if you're going uh, uh, researching Oppenheimer, they would say like uh, nuclear physicist mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, but Instead this is his classification of why he why is, he has a Wikipedia. He is a mass murderer. Mass murderer. Yeah. Yeah. Does he get categorized with the real ones? That's what I was wondering. Yeah, so I was like, wondering if I click mass murderer. But then your your search engine gets weird. Yeah, I don't have the algorithm yeah. to go yeah, that way. There are some times where like there's something in blue and you're like, I want to click it, but I don't want to. I don't want to click it. I don't like, want to turn yeah. on my VPN first. Yeah, my- <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want to go down this Wikipedia mm-hmm. rabbit. You hope that it's a series of classifications just for horror movies, oh, where yeah. it's like you know, like he's not a specter, he's a mass murderer. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, like Wishmaster is a specter spirit. That's a <laughs> that's a gin. That's something different yeah uh so it's that type of classification yeah oh i wanted to get back to the first 10 minutes because i do agree that it's the campiest and not just for the prologue the first death in this movie is easily the best one i was just thinking the dude that gets folded up in the bed (laughs) yes like the movie is all downhill from there like you get this fun prologue so many like good flashbacks and the first death fucking rules and i'm like oh this movie is gonna be awesome then every other death is just like stabbed with a machete Mm -hmm. and i was really disappointed with every other kill but yeah that guy whose body's all bent up and he's backwards and the bed gets folded up yeah. great kill yeah because it was it was a one-two punch where he got stabbed a bunch uh-huh. and then they folded him he's like oh like he, yeah. he, you think he's dead you know he's sitting there going well it can't get any worse than this <laughs> crunch and they got folded jason. it's a living it's a living <laughs> jason's pretty good at a bit yeah, <laughs> Jason's got a little sense of humor to him. And you know what? I think that that's like classic for movies in this series to go like that, like the, oh, that overkill one step too far is yes. kind of what I think of like being so charming and also horrifying, but also like that can't charm of these this franchise, of these franchises. And I think that, yeah, that first 10 minutes, it has all of it. It has the like the unne- unnecessary hypersexualization, mm-hmm. the overly gory kill with that overkill second comedic beat. And it just never maintains that flow. It never gets that violent again. Yeah. It never, it never gets that raunchy again. It just ends up being like a, a little bit of a slower pace after that a slower pace and also a hard movie to truly figure out who is our protagonist which i mean i i like that i like the trope of certain horror movies and slasher movies you think there's like eight or ten people who could be the hero and then all of a sudden seven of them get brutally murdered (laughs) and then there's those three i didn't expect those three to be the ones but this movie was a bit like who's wait Who's, am I supposed to be, fa- why is Jason Ritter in this movie? Like, don't get me wrong, he's a, a lovely actor, but uh, like why, it, he just felt shoehorned in at the last minute. Well, I think I think that whole psych ward plot line feels shoehorned in. It comes in way too late. It yes. feels like it's halfway through the movie and they're like, here's two new characters. It did, it, I would actually say, having known nothing about either of these series is, I actually didn't think it came late at all in a weird way because they really, really made me think this was a sequel to another movie. Yes. They really treated those characters like we knew who they were and I didn't know that we didn't. I was like, oh man, his movie must have been crazy where one of them's brother was killed by Freddy and now they're both here. But I just haven't seen that movie. Well, I did but, the deep dive. Did you look into it as well? He's not in the other movies. No, they're not in the other movies. These are just made up characters that were poorly introduced, but really <laughs> confidently. Yes. Like, they did a bad job so confidently. That's, like, it drove these me crazy. guys have been here before. You you just don't remember. And I look, I'm on the wikis and I'm like, they weren't. They weren't at all. Because I was like, this is, they must, I must be missing something. Did like Jason Ritter, was he a, ongoing. It's like uh, Johnny Depp is in the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Yes, he dies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he dies in the first Nightmare on Elm Street. And um, <laughs> 
But I totally forgot about that. And so I'm like, okay, is this what are I those things? Did I forget about Jason Ritter? Yeah. yeah. And, but they do sell it so confidently. I got conned. And that's why I even, I think similar to both of you, fell down like a deep dive mm -hmm. online rabbit hole trying to figure it out. Because on a, like a tertiary Google search, it's like, no, these characters weren't in any other movies. And I'm like, well, at first it was like, no, these actors weren't in any other of these movies. And I'm like, okay, but are they replacing an actor who didn't come back, who did play this character in a different, and I kept like being in denial because yeah. the movie had so confidently sold me that this was a continuation. And they're the best actors of the bunch. Those two guys <laughs> are, are actually the... both good working actors. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're the most interesting characters. And I also think though, I think watching it today, we are so spoiled on shared universes that we can't even comprehend that this is a shared universe movie that didn't bring back original characters or didn't right. connect to the other movies. We're like, yeah, but you know, Captain America's gonna be in the end credits, and and then the, the <laughs> Thanos says the ring, and this is gonna be this Infinity Stone. Like, we're so used to that. Yeah, and to watch a an movie end that's just like with like Jamie Lee Curtis driving by, going. Pfft. I don't know what's going on over there. I got my own problems. Like, yeah, like absolutely. What should have been happening? Well, Mike right? Myers pops yeah. up in her backseat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but like no little in jokes like that at all. They're just referencing movies that didn't happen, like a mm. like the Community Fake Clip Show episode. Yeah, of like things you didn't see. They also did show off the top all these great deaths and homages to deaths from previous Nightmare on Elm Streets that we didn't get to see, which I think makes it even more disappointing. There's like the puppetry. Oh, that one was the one cool. Yeah. There's yeah. like, I always remember that getting sucked through the bed. Like there's a few one like iconic ones. And then like you said, a lot of it's just, I stabbed him. And well, it, Freddy kills one person in this movie. Literally yeah. just one. The guy who he lights on fire and writes Freddy's back on his back. Oh, Freddy doesn't it. kill anyone else. Yeah. The rest is just Jason stabs. Oh. Yeah, Jason. Jason has a high body. Count. Jason, I Jason, get why Freddy was pissed. Jason fucking wrecks <laughs> right. when he goes through the the party at that one point, and the dude picks up the American flag. I felt so patriotic. <laughs> I was like, yes, We're come on, America! And then Jason killed him. <laughs> Jason instantly killed him. I was like, yes. I, I, okay, like, I, as much as uh, we were just kind of saying that, like, this movie doesn't necessarily have, like, the gore of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise and doesn't really live up to the first 10 minutes, mm -hmm. I will say that that party scene, though, is a lot of fun. Yeah. It doesn't have the great kills, but it's so fun. And holy shit, the stunt person who plays Jason, oh, yeah. I feel like did a fire burn for eight straight days. I have <laughs> yeah. never seen a stunt where the character was on fire for that long. Yeah. That was nuts. Yeah, like one of them was such a long take, he killed three people while on fire. And like sometimes the camera would cut and you're like, okay, they probably doused him and relit him and like reset and everything. But one kill, he was on fire for three kills. And mm -hmm. I was like, Burns aren't supposed to go this long. This dude is, and like he's wearing padding, obviously, because Jason's supposed to be so huge that yeah. he can have more underneath them than usually for a stunt burn. But like, it was still so long, and in, in a way that made me uncomfortable because I'm like, the budget's too low for a stunt this dangerous. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, you get a little worried. <laughs> right. You're like, if this was a two hundred million dollar movie, I'd be like, yeah, 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 you burn did a five him. minute burn, and it was safe, and there were so many people on set. But I'm like, you had five dollars and an aerosol gun, and it's... this guy probably almost died. I've actually done a, a burn on set before, what? and it was oh, on uh, it was almost, almost heroes. heroes. Yeah. yeah, I remember this. Yes, we had a a, a a double gag. Like the the gag was like my buddies going like. We need promotions. I'm going, what about a, a costume? Like wizards and like uh, role playing night. You know, it'll be a theme night. Costumes, candles, what could go wrong? And then it cut to a flash of me in a wizard costume, fully on fire, <laughs> going, this truly is the worst case scenario. <laughs> And then we called it back, so we had to do two burns, because, like, later, uh, like, I go, it, totally unrelated in the episode, I'm like, hey, well, you should call that girl. What could go wrong? And then it cuts me in another wizard's costume on fire. I go, <laughs> why does this keep happening to me? But it was like, it, it gave me such an appreciation for how terrifying it is, because I, I wasn't like, I was on my arm, down my leg, but nothing mm. on, like, heads. Like oh, yeah, because you were still delivering the line while waving it around or yeah, something. My, okay. half, my whole right half of my body. And the guy like who did it, he's like, oh, yeah, I do full burns all the time where you wear the ski mask. 
and yeah. the gel. And I'm like, that's the scariest thing I've ever. Yeah. I think of. I think it's almost scarier though that you're not wearing the ski mask and the gel over Ooh. your face. That it is like it's meant to not crawl up your arm in the way that they've set it up, but yeah. you still have an exposed face and have to deliver lines. Yeah, and try and talk. You're like, Ooh. that's wild. How yeah. long? So how long are you? Were you on fire for for something like that? Uh, ten or fifteen seconds, probably fifteen seconds, maybe. Okay. Like, so you okay. really got to not fuck up your line. I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then they got to get you out quick because it's like right at that. It was right at the cusp. But like, that's it. Okay. They, they put cover you in the cold, ice cold gel and yeah. Man. Yeah. That's wow. crazy. I'm, so I'm pretty much I'm pretty much the same stuntman. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, you can appreciate a man who was on fire for eight Absolutely. minutes killing it's, people. I, I agree with you. It's like the coolest stunt. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's the coolest stunt. Well, and I think even on top of that, to be like in the ski mask, covered in the cool gel, covered in the gel and doing this and not only doing it for that long, which is a full body burn for that long is dangerous. But for him to hit his mark and do three mm. kills where they have like line poles where it's like the person he's killing gets hit and then gets that yank where they're shot back to 20 feet because yeah. they were hit by Jason is supposed to hit like a truck. So like this man then also needs to safely perform stunts and I'm sure has zero visibility. Yeah. So like to accomplish additional like zero visibility stunt kills in that situation, it's pretty impressive. Like that, that's a cool scene. Um, can I uh, share a couple of pet peeves I had of the story? With this movie? Yeah. Fine. I know. I'm sorry to. We're going to disagree. If we're going to nitpick it apart, I suppose. Okay, um, so for me. Ryan like, versus Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> 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 Jesus. I, let, I mean. <laughs> Just the pettiness uh, the, with which wow. you said it. Wow. 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 We invite you into our home. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about our, our favorite movie. <laughs> First um, one I've seen in either franchise. The, but like, I, I do think they threaded it enough. Like, how is Jason and Fred, how are they going to work together? Like, okay, they figure out make, how to make the dreams work. And I get it. But, but there's a moment where everybody, and by everybody I mean now there's the mental patients and the leftover high school mm -hmm. kids and a sheriff, like a, like a cop that we've only, has only had like one line of dialogue so far, they're all talking and they're they instantly figure it out. Yeah, mm. there's a moment where it's like, well, you know what, Jason Voorhees, this is a guy who is here, and I think Freddy's a dream master, so he must have conscripted Freddy to, you know, he must have conscripted Jason to kill people so that people believe in Freddy again, so he can come back and kill people. I'm like, how the hell did you instantly come up with this? This is like their first guess. In like 15 seconds, they're like, there were no weapons of mass destruction. It was yes. all a false flag suit, psyop <laughs> the whole time. 100%. Right, they're flowing. They are just flow. <laughs> it's insane how quickly they unlock it. Yeah. I actually, oh, and that's not even like the first mystery they unlocked too fast because the two mental patients get out and they're like, whoa, there's a huge conspiracy. They've redacted the newspaper. And like, <laughs> why would they do this? And like, oh shit, they probably did it because we weren't supposed to remember Freddie and it was to protect us. And that was like their <laughs> first guess. Yeah. Not like yeah. the town secretly did it or like it's a sacrifice town that's evil or something. Like their first guess was the this. right one twice. Yeah. Well, what frustrates me about them understanding everything so quickly is also fi figuring out and understanding wildly irrelevant things that feel like they're from a version of the script that didn't actually get used. Ooh. Like the fact that the two uh, buddies, uh, brothers, like the guys from the psych ward mm -hmm. uh, are like talking to the main girl and they're like, "Your, I saw your dad kill your mom. And it's all been a setup from the police. But then also <laughs> I think I figured out that Freddie killed your mom and I saw your dad above your mom's body because Freddie had killed her. And yeah. then they hit it as a car crash to hide Freddie. I'm like, we did not need the potential mom. Like, it's so irrelevant to everything that the dad yeah. lies to his daughter and that at one point the daughter's love interest thought that he saw the dad do a murder. It, it's same. nothing. It's I saying, nothing. I felt the same way about it because I saw this. I'm like, what is this diversion we don't, we already have a Freddy and a Jason. <laughs> we don't need the, the specter of a possible murdering father in the mix. There's yeah. enough villainy to go around for this movie. This was another instance of, oh, there was, this is definitely a sequel. And this is actual footage from the previous movie. Because it was like so poorly explained and brought in that I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah, no, this must have actually happened in the, the last film. Yep. Yeah. Because also like, 
why was Freddy like inhabiting the dad when he killed her? I just didn't even understand what actually happened. Yes, it doesn't make a ton of sense. I I, I did read one piece of trivia that said that like because this had been in development hell for like a decade, right. uh, that apparently there were sixteen different versions of the script that ended up coming together to be in this one. one. <laughs> yes, yeah. so it's like this happens sometimes. I can't remember. Was this a comic for? I remember Freddy versus Jason comics. But was, was I, it a comic first or was it a I think the first? comic followed this because right. this was supposed to be a series of movies. I do remember the the sequel was supposed to be Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Uh, oh, yeah. Ash from e- the Evil Dead franchise, Bruce Campbell. But this didn't make enough money. Right. But they did make that comic book. Wasn't there going to be an alien crossover with one of them too at some point? Or I mean, like, they did Alien versus Predator. No, but I mean like a, one of the the oh. horror like franchises. Uh, okay, that, that I don't know. I think that there was like a lot of these type of conversations at the time to yeah, be like, sure. where are st- how many IPs can we get? You know, in a pre Disney, Marvel, right. Warner Brothers era, to be like, have we guys have we thought about combining things that make money? And I, I feel like that yeah. was a fresh idea for a few years. I would argue every fan who's ever existed has asked like, who would win in the fight? Oh, who yeah. would yeah. win this? Yeah. Huge, huge mm-hmm. amounts of things devoted to to who would win what fight. I have to go back to the dad thing for a second Please. because this is actually one of the funniest things in the entire movie to me <laughs> okay. is they show this flashback to the dad killing the mom. And this flashback, they have the dad in this awful curly haired wig. And this is an event that happened three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> there was no need to have a wildly different <laughs> hair show that level time has flashback. passed. <laughs> <laughs> this happened when his daughter was 14 and right. she's 17 now. A lot his changed. His hair would be the exact same. This unless Freddie also gives you bad hair. Yes. Yeah, well, he does. So the dad's terrible wig made me laugh so hard. I'm like, <laughs> how will we know it's a flashback if the dad doesn't have wildly different hair? Just, despite also doing the very obvious visual flashback thing in film of adding a blue hue to everything yeah, yeah, yeah. to show you that this is not the current time of reality. And or was also, that a dream hue? No. Oh. Was it a dream hue? And also the voiceover from the Ritter boy of being like, you know, three years ago I saw your dad kill your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Just there was never any doubt it was the past. Yeah. It's also the first time it's been mentioned. Yes. Mm, Up to that point, you'd think that the whole time he's like, why do you want to get back to that house? Well. The dad's a murderer. Yeah. Like, first they went to the library, (laughs) they did all these things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess it does explain why he was so worried when he saw there had been a murder at the house. Right. But he definitely should have just been like, I guess Lori's dead because her dad's a killer. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that doesn't make any sense. And for Laurie, the lead character, also to have no suspicions until halfway through the movie when he shows up with that as well is just kind of like a bummer for the lead character. Like to not start with her to be like, I've always been suspicious about my dad, my mom's murder or mm-hmm. my mom's death. But like she has she has been living blissfully ignorant for, yeah, we for didn't several even, I years. I didn't even know she was dead. Yeah. 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 I yeah. mean, they brought it up in the opening and that's why she doesn't date. She was like, I don't oh. want to date. I don't want to date this guy who sucks because my mom died a few years ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can just not want to date a guy who sucks. Yeah, <laughs> that's allowed. That's they, they, that was a teaching moment for all the young ladies watching. Like, <laughs> you know, if a guy comes on to you, bring up that your mom d- was murdered to deflect, and, then, and, and then, it will not kill the mood at all because teenage boys yeah, don't care. They don't Can't care. Be They're the real monsters. I think we can all take that away. I mean, Jason agrees. Jason does. Yeah, Jason, Jason does agree. Loves to to kill teens who fuck. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or the morality of Jason's mother, who has warped him, agrees. But mm. we're splitting hairs there. You know, he's he's acting it out. I actually thought that's how the two mains were going to survive at the end because they hadn't uh, ever had sex. The the two two right. that were left, and Jason was coming towards them, and I'm like, was well, he going to like feel their innocence and just let them live? And I yeah, he's I mean, lit he him does on fire. kill Virg- it, Like he will. Okay, he will if they're in his way or stop him. Yeah. Like, they have to inconvenience him. He's not going to go out of his way right. to kill a virgin. That's not a fun day for him. Yeah. But he'll do what he needs to do to get the job. But yeah. I, I I do like that this movie did play a, like, a nice medium line of not doing that 
Uh, and I feel like they could have drew more attention to it where it's like there's the nerdy guy who's hitting on Lori and Kelly Rowland is like, you you can't hit on my friend, you <laughs> nerd, some kind of virgin. <laughs> and it's like and then like Lori, our lead, is like, I haven't dated because I'm still not over my mom's death. And it's like implying that she's a virgin. I'm like, are they, is that going to be why they get away from Jason? And then after a bit of trauma, it cuts to all of them smoking weed in a van. And I'm like, oh, okay, now these are, n- none of these are like nerds in the traditional yeah. Friday the 13th uh, sense of like, no, w- only the pure will They're live. It's like, no, nah, we're all just smoking a little. And I like that the nerd smokes weed. And then later when the pothead is like, what if we had a little weed break now? The nerd's like, no, I smoke weed at normal times, <laughs> you yeah. fucking weirdo. I thought about real. that. So the realest nerd. <laughs> the yes. realest nerd. I will have, during a high, tense, someone tried to murder me situation, I'll have a little pot. I'm safely I, in a van going from A to B. Yeah, the, the guy goes like, what about a little J break? And I, I thought the same thing. Who's going like... I need to be more paranoid right now. I'm being hunted by two supernatural monsters. And, and I'm, I'm currently breaking into a psychiatric, yeah, a psychiatric facility, facility to steal to medicine. Hypnosil. 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 We got to get the terms right. Yeah. I also love that the nerd didn't qualify to be a virgin. He had a throwaway line where he was like, it's just not a virgin if you pay for it. And I was like, whoa. Whoa. This guy is okay. doing stuff in the background. Okay. All right, all right. You live your life, I guess. I guess. Yeah. How old are you? Is that legal? Ooh, <laughs> that's a great point. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They're mm-hmm. they're having they're having a rough day. I, I also will say though, I also think uh, guy who got high, ridiculous to get high at that point. And also like my least favorite Freddy thing. I don't like when they're too silly. That like CG caterpillar thing that also has oh, Freddy's yeah. face. Mm. I didn't think that was anything. That was my least favorite thing that happened in this whole movie. Oh th- yeah, because there were. That's kind of a, a throwback though. That kind of stuff happens a lot in like the Friday the Thirteenth, where like Freddy's. Like his face is on other things. Yeah, he's got a sense uh, of humor. Yeah, but mm. it's not like scary or weird. It's kind of rapey, gross. Like, yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah. if it was a girl, it would have been more rapey, gross. <laughs> yeah, th- and then, then he got turned into. The th- I like th- which was the guy. That's the guy. The pothead's the guy who then comes out and delivers, or he comes out and then he gets his head get chopped off because he got yes. possessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the caterpillar goes down his throat, yeah. and then that is how Freddy controls him to pour all the things down and then go fight Jason yeah. for the first time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. but that head chop was pretty good. That was, was, oh, that was slit. He gets slit. Yeah, that was not yeah. bad. No, yeah. the the dad gets head chopped early, yeah. oh, and his yeah. head just tumbles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good too. That's not bad. Yeah, that's good, not bad. Some good chops. Uh, I I do want to give one other uh, a bit of credit and uh, and appreciation. To uh, Monica Kina, who plays the 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 lead uh, the lead character Lori. Right. I think that there needs to be like a special consideration Oscar for most believable scream in a horror movie. Right. And I think that like that's an art form within itself of like every horror movie for like for decades. You need that you need that one scream in the trailer of the like hyper close up, almost right down the barrel full-on scream. I'm like, she is good at it. Watery-eyed. Watery-eyed. She, oh, she can water those eyes. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and good at a second layer of it as well, which is good vocally at the screen, mm-hmm. scream, good at the watery eye, and then also still has a level of like, what the fuck yeah. kind of frustration <laughs> with the lack of reality on her face. And right. I'm like, I like that she's not just like, ah, a machete. That there's something on her face that says, ah, a machete from some immortal fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a level of confusion yeah. there that I do really like. Yeah. yeah. So I think I, I like how she does that. I like her. I actually think I think Catherine Isabella is the, like the star of this for me. She's from Ginger Snaps. She's the one who was in the shower when her her, her boyfriend got snapped up in the bed. Yep. And I think she, her freak out is just so like how I would freak out, just like stumbling around, screaming, yelling at the cops. Like, yes, I'm covered in blood and yeah. I'm I'm upset about it. And she's also the only one who later is like grungy, which is like the only one who responds to a murder appropriately because every other teen is like, I still got up and showered and did my hair and makeup today and she's like, I'm in a baseball cap, I'm wearing like grungy clothes, I'm fucked up. Yeah, I have some trauma. Mm -hmm. Ever hear of trauma, people? No, everyone else is like, we're gonna go to school the next day even though two students were violently murdered. How did she get killed again? What was the... She was stabbed through the guy that was about to rape her. 
by Jason and Freddie got oh, yeah, mad because she was, she was drinking. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Freddie she was, was she fell asleep she in the out. field or passed out in the field. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was uh, like I liked the misdirect that you think Freddie's about to get her, but then mm-hmm. Jason got her. But I also found it was kind of a disappointing death for that character. Yes, because you're like, oh, I kind of liked her. I kind of liked her. I liked her a lot too. And yeah, to just get her like a tertiary, like she was in the way of her own rapist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh. Yeah. I don't yes. like that lesson. And she gave the. <laughs> and she gave one of the realer performances. Yeah. It's like, I really like the delivery of her line when like the first murder happens and she comes out of the shower and they run up to like that co- cop car that just happens to be pulling down the street. <laughs> and he rolls down the window and is like, is something wrong? And she holds up her hands covered in blood and just goes, oh, what do you that fucking thing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, her delivery of being so pissed off at the dumbest man's question is just mwah. Yeah, I think that was the, th- I think we all are on the same page. Like that opening little bit, you're like, okay, this could be pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the opening bit is is really good. I even actually like, I, will, I think this is a fun movie in that there is a real trope reversal of what the conspiracy is because they're like there's a conspiracy happening the they're giving us pills and the and the newspapers are redacted and the conspiracy is that the police are competent yeah. and have <laughs> actually stopped freddy from coming back via all these things they've been doing yeah by making people forget and drugging the kids yeah. and it's like oh man no one ever expects that because every other horror movie is the cops being like, there's no serial killer. You're, you're all fine. You're fine. <laughs> Go though, home. Everybody walk to their own homes alone. No curfew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely just your dad. He killed 18 teens in their dreams. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to harass John Rambo as he hitchhikes across town. <laughs> You're like, damn, these cops every he's, time. He's got just when you think they're good for getting rid of yeah. getting getting rid of Freddie. Yeah, then then the, they're harassing John Rambo. Yeah. And then the mayor shows up and he's like, let's open the beaches. Oh. <laughs> that would be a good crossover, though. Freddie versus Jason versus, versus, versus Ram- Rambo. Rambo. Oh, Rambo. Rambo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I I mean, I do think that the, I never did read the comic that was released, but I, I do think that the idea for what would have been like doing a series of these, the next one that would have been Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. That I do think the idea that like, if it was like, okay, we have a charming, quippy, comedic lead mm-hmm. and then two monsters works way better than like, what if we made Freddy kind of funny sometimes and had three dozen teenagers and the cops and a police conspiracy and a whole town and stuff. It was was just like, we've got a quippy dude who's kind of over it dealing with these two is such a cleaner idea and evolution of this. I also think that works really well because Ash like is just a human. So he would need to like get the other humans. Mm. Like he would be like, who's got guns? We're going to go to the the police. But he's like, he knows what's happening because he knows this world so well. So yeah, it would be, it would be a better like human character to be fighting these guys. Yeah. 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 Cause I do think the whole police conspiracy thing is a really good plot line, but is a movie in itself yeah. to be like a town that has a dark secret. And like, it's like, what is going on? Why have these things been redacted? What is happening here? Right. I think it's a good, clean storyline. Well, that kind of happened line. in, a, that's kind of in it a bit. Yes, so that it they, is. They, they've kind of buried or been trying to hide all these missing children, like, yeah. mm. and dro- try not to draw attention to it. To be like, we don't want kids to get scared because that's what's making the kids go missing. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, no, we're, sc- we're not scared of the notion of going missing. <clears throat> we're scared of the giant clown in the sewers. <laughs> ripping arms off. You don't like the magic clown. Yeah. That's the big thing. But yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I, I, I had forgotten about that, but you're right. That is pretty much the main driving force uh, other than the clown, the main human driving force <laughs> of it, and it works a lot better there. Yeah, yeah. more conspiracies. Hmm. I like them. There, there uh, isn't a lot of nuance in this movie. No, I think we that's could probably... fair. It is, it is wild to me they came up with two things I liked, which is like the reason Freddie and Jason are working together and the conspiracy. I actually am like, that's, that's incredible that this came about. Anything good. They are both very much of a different time, too. Like, mm-hmm. you watch a modern horror movie, or even modern, like, any kind of movie now, and you look at these old characters from the 80s. And, I mean, they were long in the tooth 10 years before this movie came out, 15 years before this movie came out. So yeah. it's like... It's interesting to see that kind of throwback, and I'm like, I don't know. I need. I get why they didn't make another one. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know they remade uh, they remade uh, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, which I haven't seen the remake of that. Did they? Did, I never yes. even heard about that. They did. They, huh. did. they did another one like four years later or five. No, uh, 2010 maybe. Oh wow. Okay, I completely I mean, missed that. Why would I know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, apparently, <laughs> apparently, wasn't very good. Yeah, oh. and, and I mean, like, I know we're revisiting Scream and Halloween. Like, right. those are ones that have come back as well. Uh, you know, they remade Evil Dead a little while ago. Yes. Uh, which I've heard is actually quite good, but I've never actually gotten around to watching that one. Either. I've heard it's a little scary. Yeah, I've mm-hmm. heard it's a little scary, but they didn't. It had a different uh, Robert England, wasn't it? Yeah, That's yeah. The, this was Robert England's last times Freddy, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think he, he seems like he's having a great time with the character. He's like, hilarious. It, yeah, he's really good. This is just a guy who, like, got this role and was like, if I can be set for life as Freddy, what a life. He's just yeah. having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Terrorizing people. Like, you can tell he's just like, the suit is so fun. And I. Just and gets, nobody knows who he It's like one of those things where you're unrecognizable oh, enough that you can, yeah. like, walk Ooh. around town and still, like, be a millionaire. And you started probably the first couple of movies. Like it wasn't like super low. He probably made more money off fan expos. I was gonna say you, you, Oh it's, certainly it's that beautiful sweet spot of like you'll have a full line at fan expo every time, but no one walking down the street will bother you. That yeah. is a wonderful place to be in as a as a celebrity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that that's what I call the voice actor sweet spot. Yeah. <laughs> but it's rare to get it while being on camera. That's kind of beautiful as well. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about a trope, and this is a trope corner thing. Just uh, and it's in a lot of movies. Do we have a theme song for trope corner. We don't. We don't. Have a theme song. Da, 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 trope corner. Cha cha. <laughs> cha cha. Oh. I like it. I'll Thank take you. it. I like it. Feel free I'll to clip it. Corner. Use it for any other nice mm-hmm, mm-hmm. rights in per- 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 perpetuity. In, in perpetuity. Perpetuity. Pepper- <laughs> wow. Yep. This is why we need new contracts. <laughs> 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 the contracts are no good, guys. Perpetuity. Oh no, all pepper. <laughs> um, trope corner. Trope corner. This is in like many horror movies, and I, it always bothers me. I hate an off-screen death. I've never had an off-screen death happen and been like, oh, I, I'm glad I didn't see that. Mm-hmm. I want to see every single death. And you in mean, this movie, they're like, the dad gets his head cut off and you don't see it. And there's like a bunch of dead people just as Jason walks through a room and it's implied he killed them. And I'm like... I'm I'm here to see uh, people die. The the dad, I would argue, the off screen was for comedic effect. <laughs> yeah. To wake yeah. up from a dream sitting next to your dad who has been decapitated, but you <laughs> haven't noticed yet. I do think that that's that's the point there. But for a lot of them, I I will agree with you as a general trope. And for the other ones, like it's like yeah, sh- show show it to me. Uh, but here's what I want to see more than a comedic moment where he wakes up and notices. I want to see Jason setting a comedic scene up, which is what he has done. He's cut off the father's head, replaced it, put it back on. Because well, it doesn't yeah, just not fall I was thinking that. Off. I was thinking that. Like, like, is he do? Is he doing the jokes? Like, he it must. Yeah, have is been. he doing bits? Because there's no blood splatters. Mm-hmm. 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 It's like the kid in the bed. He didn't have to crush him backwards in a bed. <laughs> He's a funny guy. Jason's a funny guy. <laughs> so what? What you want is a movie from Jason's perspective <laughs> that is kind of him being like a Bugs Bunny type roguish Lunatunesian <laughs> scamp. Is he not? <laughs> Where it's like, and he is. If we saw everything from his perspective, yeah. to yes. a certain you don't want to, and you don't want to hear him laugh, but you want to see like that scene where he's putting that head back on and his shoulders are kind of shaking and a he bit. Like, <laughs> like he's yeah. giggling. Like, no sound. <laughs> just that sort of like... <laughs> because he also has to not wake up the son sitting right next to him. So yeah. he's yeah. murdered this dad wildly, quietly. Just don't, don't fall, don't, don't fall. Gotta put perfect. the head back on real carefully. You know what makes it funnier away? than you walk put the head away, back on, walk. then you look, at, you do the shoulder laugh, <laughs> you look at the kid still sleeping, maybe put like a little blanket from the corner of the couch over the kid yeah. and they like tuck, like be like sleep tight and then like one more shoulder laugh. Oh, uh, I was gonna I draw like a little this. mustache on him. <laughs> oh, okay. And then you okay. kill him with no dignity a moment later. <laughs> Interesting. And the cops show up and they're like, it's a little mustache <laughs> on the body. Little, he deserved it. Huh? <laughs> he deserved to die. A little mustache. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes me wonder what Jason would do with Freddy's powers. He's already so whimsical mm. on the mortal coil. Yeah. That would be terrifying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. No, I, I, yeah, I like where your head's at here. I like the idea of it from from Jason's perspective. Uh, well, I'm feeling pretty good on Freddy versus Jason. How how are we all feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. I feel pretty good too. I will say. Oh, the, oh, any notes we didn't get to? What do we yeah, got? The one the one thing I did notice too is the final scene, and I know this from like, you know, when you work on set, they try to like fudge different locations to make it look like one place. That final scene was in like five different places, and it was like half of it they're on a lake. Uh, like there's a dock, but then they're in a construction site <laughs> right next to the lake, and I'm like, 
why is there a giant construction site right here? Like, forget the fact that maybe they're developing. Who's developing at Crystal Lake? Who's going? It's called Crystal Lake, right? Yeah. 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 Who's going? This is a place where everybody gets murdered. We got to build like a giant a condo, condo. Yeah. or something here. And it but it's somehow it's everything at once because it still has like the old boathouse where you can check yes. out a canoe. Like it's still yeah, they ha- haven't demolished. All but they're the, ready to build? The yeah. old facilities are still there in con- and they're decrepit, but they're in conjunction with new facilities and construction gear. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of those moments where I'm like, hey, what about this? What about we we need this and this this you're like okay i guess we could shoot it in one direction and fake it all right we have a there's a pile of rebar at camp (laughs) crystal lake sure pile of loose rebar hanging and then what was there what was the the, i don't even know what that was i thought it was gonna be full of cement like i was like oh they're gonna get Trapped in concrete. Oh, oh. not a bad idea. Okay. To me, it looked like in Star Wars Episode Two, there was these weird, like lava-filled things. But I'm yes. like, it's probably not lava. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't know anything able, about construction. Freddie might be able to like conjure some lava, but I don't think it's meant for lava. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also don't think people would be like, "Wow, there have been dozens of murders in this exact location. Let's leave many weapons laying yeah. about." Yeah. Will yeah, terribly maintained construction site. Yeah, terrible. Not a fa- they, no terrible. fence. No fence. No, no tape. security guard. Nothing. No, no. Uh, it, the physics of it make no sense because they've cheated the angle to the point that somehow the <laughs> 360 degrees can- contains 790 degrees of field of vision. <laughs> yeah, so no, no porta potties for the construction workers there. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. Crystal yeah. Lake looks like a real nightmare. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I imagine the land was cheap though. Got, that's got that might be explain you got it. developers you, paradise steal yeah. of a deal mm-hmm. yeah uh, well let's go in for the close let's yep. ask the final question of what would you change so now that we've discussed everything we've discussed what would you change about this if you could change anything but before we do ask that final question we will remind our listeners as we do every week uh, to please take a moment to rate review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts Spotify Podcast Addict or wherever you might get your podcasts wherever you're listening to this right now I'm willing to bet you can leave us a five star review and tell us we're fun and cool we're hip and happening tells all these nice things and it really helps us move up the charts it lets people know that we're we got people listening and that we're good and we're, we just like it we're in your hearts and on the charts that's put what we that always in, say put that in the review yep. and that's a free way to support the podcast absolutely and if, free completely free if you do want to support the podcast monetarily you can do that over on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash from superheroes whatever uh, whatever is in your budget you will get a different level of cool bonus just for whatever it is you can afford for a dollar a month you get our web comic texts from superheroes early for three dollars a month you will get these episodes early and ad free so you get the podcast early and ad free at three bucks a month that's a steal and at the ten dollar hero level you get a bonus episode of this podcast every single month that's exclusive to our patreon page this month we did jason x that is available right now if you want more jason talk if you want more he's in jason, space he's in space yeah. or if you just want more of us you get at the ten dollar level you get immediate access to all the old episodes as well it is there is so much more talk from superheroes waiting for you at patreon.com slash from superheroes that is p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash from superheroes and now let's go in for the close let's ask the final question of what would you change Diana, let's start with you. What would you change? Uh, my change is pretty simple. As I said, I like the plot of this movie. Um, I'm actually just, I want more cool deaths. I think the very first death is so great. It's so campy. It's like a double kill. And then every other death is just like, I threw you into a tree or I stabbed you. And uh, I really just want to, I want to go a little bit further. Even I think the Freddy versus Jason fight is also just a lot of like, throw you into a wall, poured some water on you and made you get a little weird. Um, so yeah, I want more like really memorable, cool deaths, which I don't think is is that hard or much to ask for in a uh, a big budget, hor- medium budget horror movie, <laughs> budgeted horror movie, but an accurately budgeted a movie that had a budget. Yep. Um, so yeah, just cooler, cooler deaths is all I want, and I think that's a pretty a simple ask. Nice, uh-huh. I like it. Ryan next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I feel the what same, would you change? same way. I feel like we could do a little better with the deaths, and and it felt like they ran out of steam a bit on that front. And I mean, the I wanted that epic ending battle to be even more violent. Like I want, 
I wanted it to be, I know why it's at the lake, but I wanted it to be at the lake, and there's a whole bunch of campers there. Like, I wanted to see, uh. while they're fighting each other, they take a second and both kill people. Like, we never actually see them both killing people together. Like, that moment where you're like, ha, 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 they're actually having fun together, and then they go back to fighting. I wanted to see that that's moment. a good. I like that, that. That's a fun idea. That's like going to a UFC fight and you might get taken out, like yeah, yeah by yeah. one of the guys. Yeah, mm. just something a little bit like I wanted to see that extra depth. Uh, I wanted to see the relationship have a, a more nuance. Oh, I get that. All right, so you wanted Freddie and Jason. I wanted some less, Fre- vi- less verses. I, want, I definitely wanted verses at the end, but I want a little Freddie and Jason, a little uh, more crossover on that. Friday. I think that'd be fun. Andrew, huh. what would you change? Uh, I love both of your ideas. I think they work really well in yes. conjunction yeah. as well to be like, if we get Freddie and or Jason versus uh, at the end and like people there, then we can get cool kills in the end section, adding to your cool kills idea. Uh, I love that. I, I kind of want to streamline this movie and just by skipping the, the police plot line gone. Yes. I think it does work but it functions in it and a different movie where that's the sole focus of a police conspiracy. Mm -hmm. So I think the police thing is gone and Jason Ritter's character of Will then doesn't need to be in a psych ward and escape, which isn't really a a thing that we care about at all and it comes in too late. If he's just a cute kid who's hanging out with the other kids and is a romantic interest and is cute and fun and likable, which he is. He's a great performer and charismatic as his character. So if it was just about like, hey, we are a bunch of high school teens who have been getting murdered in our sleep and that is not cool. Let's do something about that. It's clean, it's straightforward, and then yeah. it leaves way more time to have fun kills and have like way, way more like fun, wild stuff along the journey without getting distracted by did my dad do a murder or the police covering it up? So just just keep it about kids who are afraid of the killers of these franchises. One hundred P. I I kind of like this. I worry that it's not legally a long enough movie if you remove those things. <laughs> but then you pad it out with the cool kills. Oh, okay. You pad it out with All some right. of the cool kills. All yeah. right. As long mm-hmm. as I get something in return. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I can get rid of that stuff. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And then be like, they're developing new apartments at Crystal Lake or whatever. They've sold it as lakefront property. And then it doesn't have to be like kids, uh, kid kids getting killed at Crystal Lake. Then it's like property developers. And you're kind of like, fuck these <laughs> yes. people. Like, yeah. Yes. No gentrification of Crystal Lake, says Jason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, hey, that could be flat out like a thing, a joke Freddie says out loud while like murdering a dude in a suit who's <laughs> like looking over Take the this site. Gentrification. <laughs> Love it. I love it. I think that that works. I think we fixed well, this. We solved it. I think we did it. Uh, we solved it. We've, well, that'll be it for uh, for Freddy versus Jason. Ryan, thank you so much for coming. Thank and being you for on. having me. Thank you for having me. Where can the people uh, find you and what you're doing? I know you're touring around right now. Uh, they can go to ryanbevel.com. Uh, my Instagram is Boost Rocket because uh, I, I that's what I picked randomly before I knew it was social media like many years ago. And now it's verified and I can't change it. So, uh. but you can find me at Boost Rocket or RyanBevel.com. And I'm on a comedy tour across Canada. But right now I'm on my Ontario leg until December. So if you live in Canada, boom. And, and all the American fans out there, I've got American dates on my website as well. Dallas in uh in December as well. So. Oh, we definitely Ooh. got Americans and Canadians. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. We have, uh, yeah, yeah, we have a few Texan fans who came out to my album recording in Toronto. So that's uh, that's where we're at. Uh, so that's and Ryan Bell is uh, an absolutely wonderful comic. Anytime I get to work with him, it's a delight. So if you're listening to this. Do go see Ryan live. It's a wonderful time. Run. Don't just walk to get tickets. Run, Run. like you're being chased by Freddie and or Jason. Mm-hmm. Will you be lit on fire? Uh, not for these comedy no. shows. Mm, okay. Metaphorically, yes. Uh, he'll be <laughs> ah. In an NBA jam way, not in a full body burn stunt gel way. Excellent. Sounds uh, great. Uh, well, uh, and then uh, if you want to find me, you can find me online. I am on Instagram, Threads, and Blue Sky at Ivamy, I-V-I-M-E-Y. I'm on Tumblr at Words of Diana. Yeah, and if you want to find more of us, you can find more of our stuff at FromSuperheroes.com where you can check out our other podcasts and everything on the network. Next week, we will be back talking about Event Horizon. I'm scared. So don't be too spooked or scared. We'll be back next week. See you next time. Ooh.